Les Paul and Eddie Van Halen, two of the main reasons that I play guitar. This is the story of the last time Les Paul ever saw Eddie Van Halen. For those that have been following, my buddy Jimmy Wysocki, the mayor of Mawa, New Jersey, and Les Paul's personal confidant for the better part of 30 years of his life, talks about the last time he took Les Paul to go see Eddie Van Halen. This is really one of my favorite Van Halen stories ever. And I don't think anyone has seen these pictures. So without further ado, I'm gonna let Jimmy tell you about it. Back with my friends Pat Badger from Extreme and Barry Goudreau from Boston, who were kind enough to be the audience, the last time Les Paul ever saw Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> Whenever Les called you during the day, you kind of got worried because uh, he kept his hours. He slept all day, up all night. We shot over to Les's house. Didn't know what the problem was. We run into the house, and there he is. He's got a coat on. He goes, come on, we got to go somewhere, and I'm driving. Of course, Jimmy, as he's told me before, the one time he let Les drive, he ends up in a cornfield. So I said, no, no, I'll drive. Where are we going? He said, don't worry, just get in. I said, Les, you got to tell me where we're going. And he pointed, we're going over there. Well, he pointed to the Meadowlands. And I know Van Halen's playing there because all my friends are going to the concert that night. So I said, Les, you just can't show up. He goes, yeah, I know. Hearing Jimmy tell this and just knowing that Les Paul in his 90s is sitting in the back of this car. Keep driving, it's fine. Gonna go see my buddy Eddie. So we pull in, there's this little security guard and he goes, you got tickets? I'm like, nope. So right away he turns and he yells, Trooper! All of a sudden this little trooper, I'm about my height, but strikes up and down. The meanest looking guy you ever want to run into. He comes up to the window, he sees my shield, roll the window down, I'm like, yes sir. He goes, you know bro, you on the job? I'm like, yeah, I'm a cop up in Mawa. He goes, got tickets? I'm like, no. He goes, man bro, I can't let you in. I said, yeah, but my buddy here, let, now I'm laughing. My buddy Les Paul wants to go say hi to his friend Eddie Van Halen, and he looks and Les is sitting there. He runs around the front of the truck. Les rolls the window down and gives him a howdy. Troop goes, I just got a guitar from my daughter. It's got your name on it. And he goes, that's cool. Gave him more autograph. We got two state troopers with their lights on escorting us to the back of the Meadowlands. We get to the player's entrance between the tour buses. I'm looking at Josh. I said, this guy still got it. So Les knocks on the door and uh, the voice inside goes, go the F away, I'm busy. Les looks at me and Joe goes, he's busy, and he laughs. Well, Les opens the door, and you hear a crack. I thought Les fell, so I go around the door, and I look, and Eddie Van Halen standing in khakis, no shoes, no shirt, two cigarettes, one in his hand, one in, his, in, the, in the neck of the guitar, and he's crying. And he looked at Les, and he said, you came to see me. And Les said, you came to see me many years ago, and surprised me. He goes, I'm paying that favor back. It's Eddie Van Halen. One of the main reasons that I play guitar and listen to music and Les Paul in the same room. I've never heard this story. I mean, I don't, it's never been published. We stayed in that little recording room as practice room for about two hours. I heard every riff you could ever imagine. At one point, uh, Eddie said to Les, you still got it, Les? He goes, I think so. And Les said, you got it? And then Eddie goes up and down the neck. And it was funny because Les just sat there like looking at him like, uh, Eddie's going crazy on the neck. Les is sitting there with his arms crossed, just looking at him, judging him, eyeing him up. All of a sudden, Eddie goes, you still got it, Les? He goes, yeah, I think so. So he gives him the guitar, Wolfgang guitar, and Les goes, turn that amp up. <laughs> so Eddie's like, whoa. Then Les has the Wolfgang guitar on it. I mean, have you ever seen Les with a Wolfgang Eddie Van Halen guitar? I haven't either. And he goes, you ready? And Eddie goes, yeah. And Les hits the high E and just had to sustain. One note. And it's just ringing and ringing. Finally, Eddie grabbed the neck, the neck and stopped. He goes, I get it, Les. And they laughed about it. We're watching the show, so after the fifth song, he goes, come on, Jimmy, let's go. So he put the coat on, and he huddles us all in. And I was like, what's up? He goes, you watching him out there? I'm like, yeah. He goes, I created a monster. That was the last time Les ever uh, sat and talked to Eddie in person. Uh, they were very dear friends. You could also see the love that these guys had for each other with their arms around each other like brothers. I mean, it, it just gives me goosebumps thinking about it. And cheers to the heavens, the bold Eddie and Wes. I stayed in contact with Eddie over the years because he found out I had the um, black box, the Wes Pulverize it. And he always tried to get it from Wes and Wes would never budge on it. So once every month after that, I'd get a phone call from California. And I got the number memorized. Every time I saw the number, it'd be like, 
That's not for sale yet, Eddie. And I'd hang up. And, <laughs> and then he offered me a crazy number for that little black box. Mm -hmm. I said, nah, not yet. And unfortunately, Eddie had passed away. And uh, But I still got the black box. It was a good story. And a lot of fun. Eddie was a, Eddie was a true, true gentleman, you know. And he loved Les, Les loved him, and two heroes are up there now, with, and they're, they're making beautiful music up there. Why don't you smash that subscribe button already?